Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. It is a beautiful, sunny, breezy day here at Shady Acres. And we have a special treat in store for today's turning. This comes to us from Australia via Ron at Creations by Ron in Ontario, Canada. So it has kind of made the rounds. It's a red Mallee Burl, kind of a rare item here in the United States. And look at that right there. Look at that. Would you look at that? What do you see? Sonic the Hedgehog. We'll be keeping him. Don't worry about that part. Ron has a YouTube channel, and I will link to it down in the description for this video. Give him a look. Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Looks just like him. This is going to be a fairly simple turning, I believe, because I'm not going to do a lot of it. I need to flatten off the bottom so that it'll set flat. I think we're going to go with a recess, most likely, instead of a tenon. And all I'm going to do is make a bowl in the top part. I want to leave a lot of these points around the edges. So it's just going to be a smallish bowl in the middle here. Flat bottom, a nice finish. It's going to be beautiful. The wood, of course, is the star of this show. So I'm going to take this over here to the drill press. I'm going to drill a flat bottom hole right here in the middle of the piece. I'm going to put a hole in the middle of that for my woodworm screw, get it mounted up on the lathe, and we'll get to turning. I don't really need tailstock support on this piece, but I like to use it to mark out for a tenon or a recess. Just makes it easier at all. And I can do that just by laying my pencil across here. Uh, a recess needs to be a little bit bigger than that and a tenon needs to be a little bit smaller than that for my standard 50 millimeter jaws. Well I'm reminded that I should never say this is going to be an easy turning. <laughs> this part right here is the snout of the hedgehog and of course it's the closest to the tool rest. Everything else is further away. So that means that'll get cut away first if I flatten this whole thing off and I don't want to lose that snout. That's important to Mr. Hedgehog. I'll put in my recess and we'll go from there. I'm going to use a half inch bowl gouge to put in that recess and then my recess tool. We're going to be spinning at, I don't know, let's find out. About 670, 680 RPM, half inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Well, that's hard wood, no doubt about that. I didn't mention uh, how heavy this piece is. Very heavy and still dry. It's between 8 and 10 percent dry. My gouge, I did not sharpen it, so that's probably part of the problem. Now I'm going to switch to this recess tool to put a dovetail on the outside of this. That's going to do it. I'm tempted just to drag my gouge across here just to kind of smooth it out without really removing much out this way. I think I'll try that. Well, it kind of looks like three feet now, doesn't it? One, two, three, kind of. That might help let it set flatter, I don't, I don't know. Well, I've got it all cleared away except right here is rough. And right there, I guess, a little bit. Thank you. 
Yep, we're going with that. Hope that's okay with you. Time for sanding. I'm going to start by using my Sandoflex. This is 240 grit. I'm going to sand everything on top here that I can reach. I don't want to remove these points. That's the purpose of this whole thing is to save those points. But I do want to soften them just a touch. They're quite sharp. If some little kid gets a hold of this, I'll bet you it would draw blood. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you that. And then I'm going to use my 2 inch disc. I'm just going to sand lightly as this comes around the high spots just to kind of remove a little bit of the roughness, not too much, but some, just to smooth it out. And then I'll sand all of the turned parts in here with this as well. Uh, the lathe is going to be spinning in reverse at about 350, and I'll show you what those look like as soon as I get my mask on. better still kind of sharp I'll do a little bit more of that but that's what it's gonna look like and then with the two inch disc I'll probably have to do it yeah see it's it's catching it I'll probably have to do it this way as well I don't mind leaving the saw cuts in there I just want them smoothed out a little bit. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll bring you back here in a little bit. And we'll put some, I don't know. We'll find out. Sanding sealer probably. See you in a bit. Okay, sanding sealer it is. This looks like uh, petrified wood to me. And it kind of cuts like it as well. Very, very, very hard. Beautiful, beautiful grain, my gosh. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm not going to put any above this outer edge here. We'll do that from the top side. Oh, well, that was quick and easy. I'll put in a, another coat on here, although it doesn't really need it. It's so hard. But anyway, I'll put a second coat of sanding sealer on. Two coats of shellac. I'll bring you back here in a little bit, and we will work on the inside. See you in a bit. At the risk of boring my regular viewers, sorry about that. I show this from time to time. I don't show it every time because I don't want to bore my regular viewers. But people ask me, what do you do between coats? I used to use steel wool. It's just, it's just messy, you know. You got steel wool dust floating around the air. I just don't like it. So I, I switched to 3M abrasive pads. Uh, Scotch-Brite. Uh, Scotch, I guess 3M makes Scotch-Brite, I don't know. Anyway, I switched to this stuff, and you can, you can just hold this while the piece spins, and you can smooth it out, and then I, I use that between all coats of sanding sealer and shellac. For the final coat, I use a white one. That was a gray one. I use a white one after the final coat of uh, shellac, and again, you can just hold it up there and go like that. The problem is... That's great if you have a regular old round bowl without protrusions and, and little pointy things hanging up on you. But what I've found to be better is uh, taking a piece of that gray stuff and cutting out a circle and putting that circle right on your Velcro type sanding disc and smoothing that one. Now this is the final coat that we're looking at here. So I'm gonna put a white one on here. And spin the piece up, spinning at about 350. And that does a better job faster than holding it. And when you're doing the inside of a bowl, these will typically leave a, a circular mark in the bottom of the bowl. Doing it this way does not. So you get a better job, you get it done faster, and it's easier. Why not?
That's the way I smooth between coats and after the final coat. Okay, it's time to turn this around and start working on the inside. See if I can get it off of here. I might have to put a glove on. Nope. All right, we'll start working on the inside. Well, wouldn't you know, between me turning this around and right this second, uh, I went over to sharpen my gouge, my 5 8 inch bowl gouge, and my grinder quit. That's the third grinder that has quit on me. Sa same one every time. The first time they replaced it. The third time I bought it again, because I'm stupid. <laughs> and it went out. So that's three grinders in about three years. So I drove down to Equipment Service and Surplus in Auburn, Washington and they're a jet dealer there and they get boxes that are damaged and they open the box and they make sure everything's okay and then they sell at a discount so I got myself a new jet grinder one horsepower for a hundred bucks less than it is on Amazon so that's a good thing but now it's going to take me a day to get that all set up with my sharpening jig and whatnot. Anyway, so luckily I have about three gouges I can use. They're all in various states of sharpness, but I can just use a diamond card and kind of brush up the edges to get through this, I hope. We're going to be turning at 670 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. I just want to see where I am. I don't want to bother our hedgehog and I don't want to run off this edge over here. Doing okay. That's pretty, huh? Nice. Yeah, that's probably about far enough out. And that'll leave Hedgehog his head. That's probably important. Boy, this is, like I said, this is hard wood. I don't think we're in any danger of running too deep here yet. Well, shoot. We're not in danger of it, but we're already down to a quarter inch. So that went faster than I thought it might. So that's probably about as deep as we should go. Let's see if I can do some shear scraping here. better man that's pretty wood wow yeah I think I'm I'm pretty happy with that I will uh, sharpen up my negative egg scraper and scrape that
Very nice. Time for sanding. I'm going to start sanding with my Sandoflex. I want to sand from the inside out to smooth over this edge because it's sharp. <laughs> it's razor sharp, I'm telling you. And then I'll do a little bit more on the outside here as well. And that's 180 grit, and that's as fine as I will go on that. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my 2-inch disc. Now, this is quite smooth and nice inside here. I probably don't have to start at 80 grit. I, in fact, I'm sure I don't. I don't trust my elderly senses, so I don't want to miss anything. I want to make sure that uh, I get it all. And I'll show you how both of those work as soon as I get my mask on. Well, I said that's as fine as I'll go. That's not true. I'm going to switch to 240 and do it again around here. And then I'll use 240 on all of this as I did before. And then with the lathe spinning forward at about 350. And that's pretty easy peasy, so I'll see you back here in a bit. We'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. I think it's so cool the way the white sapwood goes all the way around the heartwood. You don't often get that. Makes for a wonderful contrast. Isn't that beautiful? I think so. I have to be careful not to go over this edge out here, over my nicely finished bottom on this. I feel real good about my decisions on this one. Let me know what you think. If I should have turned more of it away, if I should have got rid of the hedgehog. No. You wouldn't do that. How often do you get a hedgehog in your wood turning piece? Not that often, now that you mention it. I got this on here pretty heavily, so I want to wipe off some before it starts dripping where it doesn't belong. Okay, that's pretty much what it's going to look like. I'll put on another coat of this sanding sealer, and then uh, two coats of shellac. And I'll bring you back here in a bit, and we'll take a look at it. See you in a bit. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, wow, that'd be terrific. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very kindly. Well, here it is. One red Mally Burl bowl in the books, complete with hedgehog. That looks like a hedgehog, right? Looks like a hedgehog to me. What a beautiful, beautiful piece of wood, my gosh. Got a great finish on it. Two coats of sanding sealer, two coats of shellac. There's the bottom all finished up with my signature. Just really nice. I hope you like it as much as I do. I just love it. Thank you, Ron, from Creations by Ron, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.